السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد في نصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Welcome brothers and sisters in the weekly حلقة about كتاب التوحيد and tonight, inshallah, we'll talk about chapter number 36. Forbidden of showing off. Chapter number 36, page 126. This is a very important chapter when, uh, where the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about one kind of shirk. Or it is the minor shirk. And we spoke about this. And for its importance, and to mention more uh, proofs he repeated this again here he said for uh, forbidden of showing off what is the meaning of a a is something related to a ru'ya a riya is something related to a ru'ya a ru'ya means the vision the eye vision so the person shows people that i am worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is one of the main problems in Islam. To worship Allah or to show people that I am worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And riya can be major shirk and also can be minor shirk. The hypocrites, their life is riya. I mean their life, I mean the, uh, sorry, the hypocrites. At the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu who are doing the major hypocrisy, their life is hypocrisy, showing off the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions that they are worshiping Allah. When they go to the masjid to pray, just to show off. When they give charity, when they do hajj, when they do umrah, whatever they do, only for the sake, sorry, not for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So no doubt they are not Muslims. And they are the worst people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna al munafiqeen fi dark al asfal min al nar. The hypocrites are in the lowest level in the, he, in, in the hellfire. The hellfire has levels. Also, paradise has levels. Okay, but in, in Arabic we say, Darajat al Jannah, Darajat, and we say for the hellfire, Darakat, not Darajat, because Darajat is something related to something high. And the rakah something down. طيب. Here, Sheikh Rahimullah, Sheikh Hamd al Wahab, wants to talk to the Muslims. And he wants to tell the Muslim that there is something very dangerous, which is called riya. What do we mean here by riya? We mean that the person is Muslim. He prays the five prayers and he gives the zakat, he does hajj and uh, he fasts Ramadan and he is kind to his parents, but there is a problem. So what is this a problem? Sometimes or rarely, as Ibn Al Qayyim, Rahimullah, one of the great scholars, many times we mention this name. Uh, we should know this name. Uh, I, I mean Ibn Al Qayyim or Ibn Qayyim Al Jawziyyah, one of the greatest scholars of Islam, the scholars of the eighth century, and he is the most famous student of. Uh, Sheikh Hussam of Taymiyyah, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He passed away 751, 751 Hijri. He mentioned that, what is the, what is the meaning of Riyah? He said, Yaseer Shirk, very little Shirk. Okay, because if the Shirk is dominant in the life, then this is the way of the, of the Mushriks, of the disbelievers, not the way of the Muslims. So what does he mean by Yaseer Shirk? It means, that the person is paying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fasting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that day he fasted the, uh, the for example, the Arafah day or Monday, Thursday, just to show people that I am fasting. He wants people to praise him. Okay, This is the concept of Riyah. The concept of Riyah that I worship Allah or I do, I do an act of worship to show people and I want people to praise me because showing 
I mean, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show people not always haram is haram. Why? Because sometimes I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of people. Intentionally, I'm doing that in front of people. Why? To teach them. Okay? Or to encourage them. So this is sunnah. And this is something good. I am giving charity in front of people. For, for example, now I have two options. Number one, I have the option that I go online, online and I give charity. For example, 10 KD, 20 KD, more or less. The other option, I can go to the Lajna, for example, to the Islamic Center, and in front of my son, for example, or in the masjid, in front of the people of the masjid, I go to the Imam, I tell the Imam, this is a charity for the orphans, for example, or for the widows. Okay, why? My aim, my goal, to encourage people, to tell people, yalla, let's go, let's give charity also. This is good. We will not say this is shirk, we will not say this is riya. Riya means I give, I, sorry, I, I do the act of worship because I want people to praise me. I want people to say, oh, MashaAllah, he is a generous person. MashaAllah, he is praying like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Okay, I don't care about the reward of the Akhirah, but I want people to speak about me. I want people to make an Instagram and Snap and they, put, they post my photos in, in the media talk about me. This is haram and this is an act of shirk. This is an act of shirk. طيب, let's see the ayat and the hadith mentioned in this chapter. We are in chapter 36. He mentioned uh, 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 ayah in surah, uh, surah Al-Kahf. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرُ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيْ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدُ مَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَنًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Say, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am only a man like you. It has been inspired to me that your God is one God. That means Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The true God is Allah. So, whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord, let him work righteousness and associate none as a partner in the worship of his Lord. So, if your intention, your goal is the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my goal is not people. My goal is not the money. My intention is pure. I am sincere. Then you have to make your worship amalan salihan. Should be a righteous deed. Deep. How can I know what is the righteous deed and what is the wrong deed? How can I achieve the correct ibadah? We need two conditions. Brothers and sisters, I mentioned this maybe before, but we need to repeat. Okay? It is very important, brothers and sisters, to repeat and to read and to attend lectures again and again. What are the two conditions that make your act unacceptable, which make your worship acceptable worship. The two option, the, uh, the two conditions, al-ikhlas, number one, number two, al-mutaba'ah. You have to achieve the sincerity and you have to achieve following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and his worship, and the way of worship, because if you miss the first condition, if you miss the sincerity, then your worship will be shirk. And if you miss the second one, if your worship is not according to the sunnah of Rasulullah then your act will be bid'ah, innovation. And if you fulfill both of them, then your act will be amalan saliha, a righteous deed. It will be sunnah, it will be ikhlas. Okay, so brothers and sisters, this is very important that we have, we, we have to achieve these two conditions in all types of worship, all types of ibadah. In my fasting, my prayers, my hajj, all of them, I have to achieve al-ikhlas al-mutaba'ah, sincerity and following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So, 
uh, we have an, a saying from one of the scholars, Fudayl uh, ibn Iyad, uh, Fudayl ibn Iyad, radiyallahu, rahimahullah ta'ala, he is one of the great scholars. He mentioned that, that what is the meaning of al-ikhlas, uh, sorry, what is the meaning of the righteous deed? طيب, he said, akhlasuhu wa aswabuh. He, he was asked, sorry, about the ayah. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا What is the meaning of the best deed? Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, uh, Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad said, أَخْلَصُهُ وَأَصْوَبُهُ Which is sincere and following, uh, which, which is achieving the target. Then he was asked, what is the meaning of أَخْلَصُهُ وَأَصْوَبُهُ then he said, your deed, if your deed is sincere and was not according to the sunnah, it will be rejected. And if your deed was according to the sunnah and was not sincere, again, it will be rejected, will not be acceptable. But if your deed was sincere, you, you achieve sincerity and it was according to the sunnah, then this is the meaning of aswabuhu wa So this, uh, this is the meaning of what mentioned by al-Qadi Iyad, uh, sorry, not al-Qadi Iyad, al-Fudayl Mi'yad. Okay, al-Fudayl Mi'yad, rahimahullah ta'ala, taught us what is the meaning liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala, how to achieve the best deed to when you achieve these two points. Sincerity and following the Sunnah. So, brothers and sisters, this is a very important concept in our religion. Many people say, Wallahi, uh, I am celebrating the birthday of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is the problem of that? I love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, you tell them, celebrating the birthday of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is a kind of worship. So, did you achieve these two points? If you check the first one, yes, you achieved that. When you celebrate, no doubt you love the Prophet Sallallahu and you like to get the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So no doubt you are sincere. But when you go to the second condition, it is not applicable there. I mean, where is the sunnah in celebrating Miladun Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? There is no sunnah. Then your deed will be rejected. I love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We love Rasulullah. Where is the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? If we don't celebrate him, no. Said the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam should be in following him. If you claim the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then you have to follow him alayhi salatu wassalam. طيب. Then he mentioned a hadith in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah azza wa jal said, "أنا أغنى الشركاء عن الشرك." من عمل عملا أشرك فيه أشرك فيه معي غيري تركت وشركه. الله سبحانه وتعالى says this is called حديث قدسي حديث قدسي. I am most independent and free from needing associates. Whoever performs a deed while associating partners with me, doing so for others along with me, I will leave him along with his setting up of associates to me. Brothers, sisters, why do why do we look for a partner? Okay, yeah. For example, if I like to have, to have a business, I like to start a business in anything, a restaurant, a shop for computers, for mobiles. Why? I need a partner because uh, I need a support, a financial support, administrational support. I need someone who can stay in the shop because I cannot stay or one shift me, one shift them. So in this dunya, we need partners. Why? Because we are not perfect. Because we are needy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, antum al ila Allah. Oh people, you are needy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are poor, all of us. Chief. This man has millions, no, not millions, billions. He is poor? Yes, he is poor. He is poor. 
Why he's poor? Because he needs the, the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to breathe. Okay, when you eat, can you guarantee that the food can go inside your stomach? It will not stuck in between in the esophagus. If you finish your meal, do you have a guarantee that when you go to the toilet, that you can get rid of the, the, the food? This is only by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so all of us are needy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuhal nas, antumul fuqara ilallah. Tayyib. So, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is the free of need. One of the names of Allah, Al-Ghani. One of the names of Allah, brothers and sisters, it is very important to know the names of Allah. To know them, to memorize them, to study them. One of the names of Allah, Al-Ghani. Ya ayyuhal nas, antum fulqara in Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. One of the names of Allah, Al-Ghani. What does it mean for Ghani? Al-Ghani, al-ladhi la yahtaju ila ahad, wal kullu muhtajun ilayh. Al-Ghani means the free of need. Al-Ghani means the one who doesn't need anyone and everyone needs him. Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is Al-Ghani. He doesn't need anyone. And everyone of us, sorry, everything needs, needs him. Even the animals, the jinn, the angels, the human beings, all of us, everything needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning of Al-Ghani. So, when you put a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you, sorry, I don't need any partner, so I will leave you with your partner. And I will see how your partner can help you. And of course, anyone, anyone will be left from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his partner, then he will lose. But if you keep your worship, Sincere with Allah alone, then you are the winner. Who are the winners? The Muwahid. The Muwahid. And the Mushrik, he's, he's loser. I mean, those who, who worship with Allah, anyone else, they are losers. And those who worship Allah alone, they are winners. طيب? So what do we understand from this hadith? We have to worship Allah alone. If we put any partner with Allah, Allah will leave us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do the scholars mention? There are many important points or, uh, 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 under this topic and these hadith and ayat. Number one, we should know that when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are different categories. The correct one, for example, in the salah, when I stand up before starting the salah, I intend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only Allah. I mean, my prayers only for the sake of Allah. Pure. My intention is pure. Okay? This is the correct one and this is compulsory. It is wajib. It is wajib. It is compulsory to be sincere in your worship. So there is no problem. Number two. I mean the second category. When the person starts his worship to please people. Okay? Why you are praying now? Because my boss is there. He's watching me. Okay, and my boss, he's religious and he likes people who are praying. So I just showing him that I am praying. A'udhu billah. Astaghfirullah. No, this is not allowed. So this prayer is not valid. And you, this is a, he. This person is a sinner, and he should seek istighfar, forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and he should repeat the salah. With a sincere intention. Okay? So this is shirk. This is shirk. Showing off. This is also called riya. Okay. The third category. Suppose that you are in the masjid alone. Okay? Then you started the salah. Why did you start the salah? Because you want the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very good. And this is important. Allahu Akbar. Your plan is to pray two rak'ah. And you read in the first rak'ah, Surah Al-Fatiha, and for example, Inna A'tainak al kawthar And in the second rak'ah, you, you, your plan is to, write, to recite Surah Al-Fatiha, then, Qul Allah Ahad. 
So your plan is to pray two minutes. Allahu Akbar. In the middle of your salah, someone came inside the masjid. You were alone in the masjid. Then someone came in the masjid. Then the shaitan comes to you. The shaitan tells you, Habibi, please make your salah longer. Okay, show them that you are praying nice prayer, not very short prayer. So you said the shaitan, good idea. Then you followed the shaitan. Then you start to recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Tabarak al-Ladhi bi-Yadi al-Mulku wa ala kulli shayin qadir. You prolonged your salah. Why? For the reward? No, not for the reward from Allah. To please people, because you want people to say, MashaAllah, this brother is praying long salah. So you plan your prayer only two minutes, now you made your salah ten minutes. So now there is a problem. What is the problem? The start of the salah, pure, clean, sincere. But something came in between. So what will happen? Some scholars said the full salah is not valid. Why? Because Allah will not accept any anything impure. Other scholars said, like Ibn Ghayr said, uh, the, base, the, the basic of your salah is acceptable. The two minutes are acceptable. But what you added, the eight minutes will not be acceptable. Why? Because you added something, you prolong your salah for the sake of people, not for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But no doubt this is called riya and you will be punished because you are you were shown, uh, shown people that I am praying long salah. So both opinions mean both opinions mean that you are in danger. The first opinion said the whole salah is not valid and also you are a sinner. The second opinion said your salah is valid, but still you are a sinner because part of your salah was not pure. Okay. Tayy. Also, he mentioned a very important hadith uh, the, 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 that Ahmed, okay, when they say Ahmed, they mean an Imam Ahmed, Ahmed bin Hanbal, the Imam Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He reported the following uh, marfu' hadith. What is the meaning of marfu' We explained that in details, if you remember last year, marfu' mawquf, maqtu' you can refer to the lectures about the science of hadith marfu' it means it was said by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said shall i not tell you what i fear for for you more than the false messiah messiah al-masih al-dajjal because there is there are two messiah one good messiah and one bad messiah messiah the first, the good messiah is isa jesus he is called Al Masih Isa ibn Maryam. Al Masih Isa ibn Maryam. Okay. What is the meaning of the word Al Masih? Al Masih, this, the, the origin of this word from Al Masih, Yamsah, to wipe. Now I am wiping the table. I am wiping on my head for the wudu. Okay. So the, scho the scholars say why he is called Al Masih? Alayhi salatu wasalam, Jesus, they said because, wallahu alam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the power that yamsah ala al-abras wal-akmah fayabra bi-idhnillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the power when he wipes on the blind person, he will see. Allah gave him the power that he can cure the blind by the will of Allah. Or the one who has uh, the skin problem, uh, also he can wipe on him and Allah will give him the, 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 the good skin again. So because he is wiping on the sick people, then they will be cured by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, this is the meaning of al-Masih, Isa ibn Maryam. And the other Masih, which is mentioned here, Al Masih Dajjal. What does it mean Dajjal? Dajjal from the word Dajjal, who is lying. Dajjal means Al Kadib, or the worst lying, very bad lying. Okay? Yani, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, 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 
like for example love is levels also the fear levels al kadib the lying also levels okay if you remember we mentioned about love okay there is something called al ishq some something called al khulla tayyib al mawadda okay different levels uh, and also al kadib lying there is something called al ifk allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in alladhi ja'u bil ifk allah mentioned al ifk this is one of the bad lying okay also the same thing in dajjal so he is al masih dajjal he is lying he is telling people i am your lord i am i am a prophet at the beginning he will say i am a prophet then he will say i am a, your lord masih dajjal so uh, uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said shall i not tell you what i fear for you more than al masih dajjal which is more dangerous than masih dajjal the companion said oh they are indeed oh rasulullah he said in comes uh, inconspicuous shirk as when a person improves his rendering of the salah when he knows that others are watching you decorate your salah you improve your salah you prolong your salah you make your salah longer nicer according to the sunnah because someone is watching you this is more dangerous than the Messiah Dajjal, the false Messiah, which is called a Riya. The question now, which comes to your mind, is it dangerous? Is it serious like that? Yes. Why? The scholars say because the Messiah Dajjal can be seen by our own eyes. We can't see the Messiah Dajjal. And it is written on his forehead, Kafir. Allah, sorry, the Prophet وسلم, said that it is written on his forehead or between his eyes, kafir, and everyone can read that, even if he is illiterate, ummi, he can read that. Okay, and the Prophet وسلم, told, told us about him. But the problem of riya, of the minor shirk, of showing off, it is something hidden, very dangerous. Okay? It can enter your heart. The shaitan can put this inside your heart without... Uh, يعني, you, sh- you need a strong awareness of shirk. And you need to seek the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is very dangerous. Okay? That's why it is very serious. Shirk. طيب. طيب. Shaykh, now we are afraid. We don't know. Uh, how to save ourselves from shirk, the minor shirk, riya. The Prophet وسلم, told Abu Bakr a very nice dua. He taught Abu Bakr and also this dua for everyone. You should say to protect yourself from the minor shirk, from the riya. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ala alam wa astaghfiruka lima ala alam. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana alam. أستغفرك لما لا أعلم. Oh Allah, I'm seeking refuge with you from shirk that I know, and I'm seeking forgiveness when I don't know. طيب. So by this dua and others, you can protect yourself. And always ask Allah subhanahu wa taala. If you remember, we mentioned the, the fourth chapter in this book, Kitab Tawheed. There is a chapter called Bab al Khawf min al Shirk. The chapter, the, the name of that chapter, the fear from Shirk. And we mentioned the ayah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that Ibrahim, Ibrahim, who is Ibrahim? The messenger Ibrahim alayhi salam. He said, He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, keep me and my children away from Shirk, from worshipping idols. Ibrahim. And his children. Who are his children? Ismail and Ishaq. So all of them, prophets and messengers. What about us? Wallah, we are maskeen. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always to protect us from the shirk. We should re- re- repeat this dua. Repeat this dua. Allahumma jinubni wa baniya and na'bud al-asnam. Allahumma hafadna min al-shirk. Oh Allah, protect us from shirk. Allahumma inni bika min al-shirk. Okay, this is very important, uh, brothers and sisters. I'll stop here, inshallah, and then I'll see if you have a question.
Hadil, what is the meaning of the Antichrist? Should Antichrist? He is called the Dajjal. We, we mentioned the Dajjal. Uh, the Dajjal. Yeah, this is long story. This is of course, this is one of the major signs of the hereafter. Okay, the Prophet sallallahu told us there are minor signs and major signs for the hereafter. Ashrat al-Sa' al-Kubra wa Ashrat al-Sa' al-Sughra. Tayyib, uh, one of the Ashrat al-Sa' uh, sorry, Ashrat al-Sa' al-Kubra, they are ten. Ten. One of them, al-Masih al-Dajjal, Luhur al-Masih al-Dajjal. And this is a horrible sign. Tayyib? And this is a horrible thing. Al-Masih al-Dajjal. The Prophet ﷺ told us how to protect ourselves from Al-Masih al-Dajjal. Okay, and he told us what kind of power that he have, he ha that he has from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from Allah, not from himself. So, يعني, Allah subhanahu gave him the power that he can go quickly around the whole earth. Very quickly. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that he will stay. يمكث في الأرض أربعين يوما 40 days. يوم كسنة ويوم كشهر ويوم كجمعة وباقي أيامي كأيامكم. The Prophet ﷺ told us that he will spend 40 days. One day as one year. The second day as one month the third day as one week and the rest of the days like the normal days he will subhanallah he allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives will give him the power that he will he will say to the clouds or to the heaven amtiri he will say to the heaven send the rain and it will give the rain and he will tell the earth ambiti Show us the, your grass and your plants, and it will. Allah will give him the power. And also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the power that he will kill a person. He will cut this person into two pieces. Then he will fix him again. But he will not do that again. Then you sallat alayhi. So, this is Al Masih al Dajjal, one of the, the major signs of the last, of the hereafter. Before, I mean before the hereafter. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us some, some hints to protect ourselves from the danger of Masih al-Dajjal. One of them is to memorize the first 10 ayat, to memorize the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. Number two, to make dua at the end of every salah, before the salam. We say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhabi jahannam, wa min adhab al-qabr, wa min fitna al-mahya wa mamat, wa min sharri fitna al-Masih al-Dajjal. And some scholars say, this is compulsory dua. You have to say this dua, and also you have to teach your children this dua. And also one of the things to protect yourself from Masih Dajjal, if you hear about him, you have to escape. Don't say, no, I am ready to meet him. I can recite Surah Al-Kaf. You, you have to run away from him. So this is Masih Dajjal. Why is Dajjal given this power? Okay. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has the wisdom. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the power for Masih Dajjal and for the Shaytan? Or for... Why Allah gave the power for Ad, Thamud, Fir'aun? This is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Uh, our care should be how to protect ourselves from Masih Dajjal. Okay? This is, should be our concern. Why? We should not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why. A hadith stated in Sahih Muslim states sorry sorry a hadith stated a hadith stated what do you mean or you are or you are going to write the hadith Can we say this dua in English or in our language? Uh, mainly, 
mainly we, we, need, we need to pray like the Prophet and the Prophet uh, taught us this dua in Arabic so inshallah it is very very easy very easy inshallah you, you can uh, memorize this dua maybe not today tomorrow you can say it in Arabic Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adabi jahannam wa min adabi al-qabr wa min fitnat al-mahya wa al-mamat wa min sharri fitnat al-masih al-dajjal Okay, Brother Antonio, this is easy, inshallah. Now we can repeat this, and you will memorize it after half an hour, bismillah. Okay, at the beginning, if you cannot, you can say it in English. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدجال ممسوح العين مكتوب بين عيني كافر يقرأ كل مسلم. Yes. Yes. Should we be scared? I feel scared when I think a lot about the dajjal. Of course, this is something, yeah, I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam scared the companions and the whole Muslims from the Messiah Dajjal, no doubt. But the Muslim should put his, should trust Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Then follow what is mentioned in the Sunnah, then you will be a very strong person. Okay, yeah, I mean, it is like we, we, we fear the hellfire. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told us about the types of punishments in the hellfire. Should we fear the hellfire? Yes, we fear the hellfire, wallahi. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the hellfire, we, we should fear the, the hellfire. But when we follow what is mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah, how to protect ourselves from the hellfire, inshallah, we will be secure. Bismillah. But no doubt, the Muslim, this, we mentioned this in the previous weeks, the Muslim should be between two things, the fear and the hope. This is very important. It is not allowed to live in this dunya with the hope only or with the fear only we need both of them does this mean every muslim literate and illiterate can read this yes the prophet said that thank you welcome welcome Antonio. can birds welcome I know that yeah, I said how to talk about the Jal, this is a serious topic, a very important topic. We need to learn that. We need to speak about this more, uh, yeah, not only once a life or once a year. You need to read about that and hear lectures about that, inshallah. The Kafirs would, won't be able to read this. Allahu Alam, but even if the Kafir reads this, what is the benefit for him? He is kafir, already kafir. The, the job of Masih Dajjal is to make the people, the Muslims, non -Muslims, as non-Muslims. And he will tell the people from death, if I, brings, if I bring your parents back to life again, will you follow me? He wants people to leave Islam. Okay. So the, if the kafir reads that or not, يعني, what is the point? Allah understand. حياك الله لو وصلوا ولكم ولكم معز رحمان حياكم الله وإياك the striving soul حياكم الله brothers sisters may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless all of you uh, see you إن شاء الله Saturday after الفجر بإذن الله about 6.30 the tafsir class سورة البقرة and also I like to tell you الحمد لله now we have the new center here in, in روميتية uh, if you like to have small booklets about uh, Islam, uh, we have different languages. We have uh, Tagalog, uh, <coughs> English. Uh, uh, we have maybe six, seven languages. Okay, uh, some books for the Muslims and some books for the non-Muslims. So if you like to have your free copies and you have your friend or you have someone who is a new Muslim or non-Muslim, you can give them. Uh, th this uh, this gift to invite them to Islam. So you are welcome here in the Lajna to get your copy freely. Zakumallah uh, khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.